Red flags for Republicans. There's a growing number of Republican con congressional retirements in recent weeks that are stoking party concerns, particularly the latest one. A surprise announcement from rising star Congressman Will Hurd, who said that he would not seek re-election in his highly competitive Texas district. Congressman Hurd, who had long been considered part of the future of the Republican Party, is the lone black Republican in the House. The congressman represents a new swing district in Texas. Hillary Clinton won the district in 2016. Hurd was barely reelected in 2018. His seat might be hard for Republicans to hang on to. Hurd is just one of six House Republicans who've announced their imminent departure from Capitol Hill in the last two weeks. Two more Republicans announced earlier in the cycle, including Susan Brooks, who party officials had chosen to lead recruitment efforts in their attempt to claw back the majority in the House. Now, Brooks is one of two Republican women leaving the House, meaning just 11 Republican women are now seeking re-election. Political reports a fun stat that's making its way around GOP circles. There are more men named Jim in the House than Republican women running for re-election. It's clear that there are at least two reasons for many of these retirements. The first one is changing demographics. Both Congressman Hurd and Congressman Pete Olson of Texas narrowly won re-election in 2018, and many analysts predict their races will be tough to win another time. But it's also obvious that the president himself has been a big factor in these exits. Hurd was one of only four Republicans, along with the also retiring Susan Brooks, who voted to condemn Trump's racist tweets against four Democratic minority congresswomen, tweets that Hurd condemned again in a new interview to The Washington Post. Quote, when you imply that because someone doesn't look like you in telling them to go back to Africa or wherever, you're implying that they are not an American and you're implying that they have less worth than you. The transformation of the Republican Party to the party of Trump has not been pretty for many Republicans. And of the retirements, none highlights that more than Will Hurd's. Here's the former Republican Congressman Mark Sanford on MSNBC. To state the obvious, some of the president's rhetoric is destructive. It's harmful, not only in selling a message, but frankly, in building a party. And if we increasingly dwindle to being a party of white men, we got a real problem given the, the, the trend lines within our country in terms of demographic diversity. Now, if past is precedent, expect this trend to continue for Republicans. If you're not fully on board the Trump train, it might be your time to get off. And there's one very big problem with that, according to former Bush speaks writer Michael Gerson. Gerson writes in The Washington Post, Trump's divisiveness is getting worse, not better. He makes racist comments, appeals to racist sentiments, and inflames racist passions. The rationalization that he is not, deep down in his heart, really a racist is meaningless. Trump's continued offenses mean that a large portion of his political base is energized by racist tropes and the language of white grievance. And it means whatever their intent, that those who play down or excuse or try to walk past these offenses are enablers. Leading off our discussion tonight, Bob Inglis, former Republican congressman from South Carolina and the executive director of RepublicN.org. Daniela Gibbs-Leger, former president, special assistant to President Obama and the executive vice president of communications for the Center for American Progress. And David Korn, Washington bureau chief for Mother Jones and an MSNBC political analyst. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you for helping me kick off the show on a Friday night. Uh, Daniela, let me begin with you. The Departure of Will Hurd is a big deal for a lot of Demo a lot of Republicans. I'm sorry, who felt that there were still people in the party who could uh, sort of help carry it forward in a in an era after Donald Trump. Yeah, this is a very big loss for them. And honestly, it's a little unfair to Congressman Hurd to expect him to carry the weight of all uh, Republicans who don't abide by Donald Trump's racism. And, and honestly, I feel like it, it's almost too late for this party now. Uh, if you're going to remain a Republican, like you said, it is Donald Trump's Republican Party. So if you're going to remain a part of that party, then, yeah, you are signing on, you are co-signing, whether you like it or not, to his racism. And I guess William Hurd just was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. 
Bob Inglis, uh, there was a tweet from the Texas Tribune's Abby Livingston uh, about reaction to Will Hurd's retirement. It, uh, it reads, my phone is absolutely exploding with texts from Republican operatives re reacting to the retirement. All have a word that I don't normally use on this forum and my mother highly disapproves of, but it rhymes with duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I got it. Yeah. Um, yes, I think that it is a real problem, of course, for the GOP to have uh, to, to have Will Hurd retiring, because that district's going to be hard to hold. Uh, that's what those tweets are about, of course, is the difficulty of holding that district if, in, in Republican hands. Um, but, you know, I think that my party, the Republican Party, has to uh, re-examine uh, where we are. And uh, it's time for Republicans to stand against what the president is doing here with the racist tweets and the uh, and, and the uh, d disputation of the of climate science. It, it seems, sounds a little bit like uh, Bolsonaro of uh, Brazil, really, uh, which is not usually where we expect the president of the United States to be. So some members of Congress run on their uh, their record, some run on, on policies, and some run on momentum. And the problem here is the momentum, uh, David Korn, seems to be with the president, at least amongst those voters who are going to cast their ballot for a Republican. The Associated Press had an interview with another Republican Republican retiree from Congress, Paul Mitchell, uh, and he says there's a mood of tremendous frustration with the lack of accomplishment, uh, he said in an interview this week, days after stunning colleagues when he said he's leaving after just two House terms. Quote, why run around like a crazy man when the best you can hope is that maybe you'll see some change at the margins? Uh, how does this uh, stop uh, from becoming a, a, a mass movement of people who are just frustrated with, with Donald Trump having taken over the Republican Party? I don't think there'll be a mass movement of people frustrated with Trump because the base of the Republican Party is with him. We've, you know, we're two and a half years into the Trump experiment of the Trump disaster, depending on your perspective. And it's taken this long for some Republicans to start bailing in only a handful of numbers. I mean, you know, the, the, the party in the House, the Republican Party in the House was 99.9 5%, I think, white before uh, Will Hurd announced he was leaving. And we've had these racist tweets. We've seen no one in the lead, really in the leadership position of the House or the Senate, Kevin McCarthy or Mitch McConnell, come out and, and distance themselves from this. I mean, Trump has taken the party out of the closet in terms of its racism. I think the Republicans have always had a problem. It goes back to the Southern strategy with Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan decrying welfare queens, talking about uh, um, states' rights. You had the Willie Horton ad for the George H.W. Bush um, campaign. And so there's always been this flirtation, if not more so, with racist tropes, as they like to say. Trump has taken the party fully out of the closet, taken off the hood, if you want to say it that way. And most of the party, at least the people in control, say, yeah, not a big problem. And you have people still coming to the rallies, you know, cheering him on. So I think, you know, I really respect Congressman Inglis. He knows that. Uh, but I think the time to stand up is really almost too late. I think you guys got to start a new party or at least, you know, burn this one down because you're not getting it back. Bob, what do you say to that? Well, uh, there's another narrative, you know, there are Jack Kemp Republicans like me, the people, you know, uh, that, that believe that conservatism uh, works if it works for everyone. If, it's, if it does, then it's good for philosophy. If it doesn't, it's not very good. And so there are those of us who are Jack Kemp Republicans. There are people like Nikki Haley, who took down the Confederate flag in South Carolina. So there, there are some different uh, folks out there that are ready to uh, lead a grand opportunity party if we could get Get away and break uh, break away from the grumpy old party, which I agree it has become, and so uh, that grumpy old party will not survive. But I hope that out of its ashes can come a free enterprise party that believes in the sanctity of life, that believes in a smaller government and an efficient government, that believes that the government can do things, that believes that America should lead the world. And the belief is that free enterprise can solve things like climate change if we just get the right policies in place. So uh, that party can exist, but I agree, we've got to jettison this grumpy old party, which 
really is uh, headed to the ash heap of history. The problem, Daniela, is that it's, it's, it's seeming in the last few weeks something more than grumpy, uh, starting with the president's attacks on uh, the, uh, the Republican Congress, the Democratic Congresswoman, and then um, his, uh, his comments about uh, Elijah Cummings and Baltimore, and then last night he was carrying on about inner cities. And, uh, you know, it's, it's more, it seems more than a flirtation with racism now. It seems like all-out dating. Uh, yes, it is. It's marriage, basically. And I, I just have to push back a little bit. This did not start with Donald Trump, okay? Let's not forget that Sarah Palin was out there whipping up those crowds and talking about President Obama and highlighting his quote unquote otherness and, and all the ugliness that we saw that came with President Obama's election and the rise of the Tea Party and some of the racist stuff that we saw around then. So, uh, to David's point, I think Trump just bought out a lot of the racism that has sort of been dormant and maybe behind the scenes. We heard those recent Reagan-Nixon tapes where President Reagan, everyone's favorite lauded Republican president, uh, was calling black people monkeys and they were laughing about it. Racism has been a part of this Republican Party for decades, and they just found somebody in Donald Trump who wasn't afraid to embrace it. And now people are feeling emboldened in the country to come out and talk about it freely. So uh, there are people in the Republican Party who are fighting back against the idea that uh, losing Will Hurd in Congress is an actual loss for the party, David. Uh, Texas Precinct Chair uh, Kathy Ponce says good riddance to Will Hurd. Uh, let's listen to what she says. I am ecstatic and happy that Will Hurd will no longer be seeking a re-election for his congressional district. He is not of Republican values. He's a rhino. So, you know, Texas needs to start standing with true conservatives. Uh, rhino, meaning a Republican yeah. in name only. That's the accusation if you're a Republican uh, these days who doesn't agree with President yeah. Trump. He was the one black Republican, and he's not even a Republican. I don't know what that means, but I also I only expand this out one bit too. Will Hurd not only was the one African American in the, in the House on the Republican side, he was also one of the maybe the only uh, Republican member of Congress who seemed to give a damn about Russia's attack on the 2016 election instead of the guys on the Intelligence Committee who run around and trying to distract and say that didn't happen or that a FISA warrant is far more important than the attack on, a, on, a, on an American uh, presidential election and Donald Trump's involvement with that. He was out there saying this is bad. We need to investigate this. We need to be honest and was sort of a counterpoint to Devin Nunes. And now Republican party is fully on the side of, hey, nothing happened. And that, again, is bad for the republic. And uh, another reason, to quote Congressman Inglis, the party could end up on the ash heap of history. Right. And, uh, and, and Bob Inglis, uh, he was an intelligence guy. This, uh, Will Hurd came from the intelligence community, so he had a good understanding of this. But uh, Justin Amash tweeted today uh, to a point that you were making a little while ago. There was a time when the GOP establishment hated Donald Trump. Then they realized they could use a man like this, unprincipled, transactional shameless to push their agenda. McConnell and McCarthy are giddy about Trump's. Conservatives in Congress are the ones privately horrified. Tell me about this. Why are conservatives in Congress privately horrified, if you, if you listen to what Justin Amash says, but the leadership is not? I don't know. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. What, 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 I, think, I think everybody's pretty much horrified um, but and terrified of the activists in the party. Um, that's true, by the way, of the Democratic Party, too. It's why the Democrats are doing such a good job right now in their debates of seeing that Donald Trump gets a second term, um, because they're terrified of the activists in the party. Um, and that's our challenge in America. It's not just the Republican Party, but the fact that the Democratic Party has people with some really wild ideas that draw the party too far and out of the mainstream. I, I would, I would hear that, but, but on the, the wild side. ideas about giving everybody health care are very different from wild ideas about being racist. Wouldn't you argue Thank the you. same? That, that's, that's true, except this one. The big one that the Democrats really don't understand is if you, if you treat abortion as a sacrament of some sort um, and you run a high priest or high priestess of abortion in America, you cannot win the South. You cannot win Texas. 
and you cannot win the presidency. And so uh, as long as that cultural divide remains with the Democrats choosing, basically telling Joe Biden that he has to abandon 20 years, 30 years of a policy posi position on no public funding of abortion, you mm -hmm. must accept it, Joe. He acquiesces. He hands the White House back to Donald Trump because you cannot win the South or Texas with that position. Uh, interesting, though, because Ted Cruz of Texas, Daniela, uh, has uh, warned uh, that there are going to be there's trouble for Republicans in Texas. He told The Washington Post the president's reelection campaign needs to take sex, Texas seriously. Uh, he added that while he remains optimistic about the GOP's chances, it is by no means a given that Trump will carry Texas. If it's no by no means a given that Trump will carry Texas, then it's by no means a given that Trump will carry uh, the popular vote uh, or uh, the the electoral college. That's that's absolutely right. You know, he will probably again have a lot of help from his friends in Russia. But you know, Ted Cruz is onto something. He saw what happened in his Senate race and how close uh, Congressman O'Rourke came to beating him. The demographics that are changing in Texas, uh, the voter registration drives that are happening on the progressive side, absolutely, Texas could very well be in play. And you know, I think you look at somebody like Will Hurd and and I don't know that that woman who seems to be so happy that he's not running Kathy again. Kathy Ponce, uh, the precinct chair. <laughs> Yeah. Um, OK, lady, can you keep thinking that if that helps you sleep at night. Uh, but I, I think, you know, he's like the canary in the coal mine. So absolutely, you know, forcing Republicans to spend more money in Texas is only good for Democrats. And can I just push back on one thing? Uh, no Democrat is running to be the high priest or high priestess of abortion. I don't even know what that means. Are they running oh, to have really, access they to are, healthcare? Danielle, they are. No, you, you no, know they are. No, they're not. I mean, no, I think that, no, uh, that's a look great at, Republican Look at the Bill Clinton point. called absolutely it safe, not. legal and rare. But Hillary Clinton said, basically, we got to have it. Bill said, safe, Her position legal, and was rare. No you might be sir. able to win. I'm sorry. Oh, it was. It was quite different no. because she needed to ramp up the base. She needed to get them all excited. That's our problem in America today: is too much acquiescence to the base. We've got it in the Democratic side with Jerry Nadler of all people having a primary opponent in Manhattan, and then you have on the Republican side the same fear. There are a lot of reasonable people in Washington, but they're scared of the activist in their own party. But you're talking That's about the challenge. difference between, but, 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 but Congressman, you're talking about the difference between a policy fight on the, within the Democratic side and, on, as, as Ali just mentioned, whether Trump is a racist, a bigot, misogynistic, ignorant, you know, can't, incompetent. I mean, those are the things that the base activists of the Republican Party are cheering on rather than having a legitimate fight over policy. Right. This well, isn't yeah, a both David, I think they're not, they're not exactly cheering him on. I think that well, what the people it is, at the there rallies are many are. people. Yeah, the people at the rallies are. Yeah. But I think there are many Republicans who cringe at what he says and does and wish he'd just go away. But <laughs> they don't know how to get <laughs> rid of him. <laughs> well, oh, I, 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 I would, let me tell you, I just got back from a vacation. I'm a little jet lagged, but I would I would take listening to the three of you discuss uh, very important matters that we need to discuss uh, for a lot longer. Thanks to all three of you for helping us kick it off tonight. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.